Okay, so we are in the chapter on diagonalization, and we were, I think we were going to do another example of a diagonalization, or something, let's see, 67, We're going to do a first example of diagonalization. Okay, so we got the theory of diagonalizing. Now we're doing some <laughs> diagonalization. Okay, so we have this matrix A. Uh, we want to diagonalize it if we can diagonalize, diagonalize it. So first of all, we calculate the eigenvalues. So, you know, the normal thing, matrix A, you minus lambda on the diagonal, and you find the, you know, you calculate the determinant, I'm not going to bother doing that. Okay, you get, actually, you know what, I am, just to check what they're doing. Okay, so we want to calculate this 1 minus lambda minus 1, 2, 4 minus lambda. So what I like doing is fast reduction. So let's see, can we make this nicer in any way? Uh, 4 minus 1. Yeah, okay, let's do, we could do. We could make column 1 become column 1 plus column 2. Okay, so then that column 1 will become 3 minus lambda. And here we'll also have 3 minus lambda. And then we'll have 2. 4 minus lambda still in column 2. Okay. Uh, so then you can factorize out the 3 minus lambda. And you have 1, 1, 2, 4 minus lambda. Okay. Now you could do subtract row 1 from row 2. You're going to get 3 minus lambda. You can have 0, 2 minus lambda there, 1, 2, and now it's a upper triangular matrix, so the determinant is just on the diagonal. Okay, 3 minus lambda, 2 minus lambda, so the same as what they have. Eigenvalues are 2 and 3, which means already we can tell this will be diagonalizable because they're distinct eigenvalues. Two, two, two by two matrix, it's got two distinct eigenvalues, so they must have linearly independent eigenvectors, and so we'll be able to diagonalize this. But let's actually find the eigenvectors now. So we've got to stick them in the eigenvector equation. So first of all, we have what? Uh, for, the, for the eigenvalue 2, we're going to have 1 minus 2. It's minus 1. And then here we have minus 1. And then we have 2. And we have 4 minus minus 1. Sorry, it's 4, four, four minus 2, sorry. 4 minus 2, which is 2. OK times the eigenvector equals the zero matrix. So we could do row 2 minus row 1. We could get 0, 0. We could also at the same time do times row 1 by minus 1. You get 1, 2, 1 minus 2 there, sorry. And you have V equals 0. And so that means that V could be 2, 1. OK? Of course, already scale the multiple of that. Next one, eigenvector uh, equation. So we have lambda... The eigenvalue is 3, so we have 1 minus 3, which is minus 2, and then we have still have the minus 1, then we have the 2, and then we have 4 minus 3, which is 1, okay, times of V equals 0. So now we could do, we could, well, those rows cancel out, and you could also times, so we could do basically, we could do row 2, of minus a half times row one at the same time we could also divide row one by minus two so then we're going to get top row we get one minus one second row will be zero zero v equals zero and so a v eigenvector could be one one okay so stick those two matrices vectors sorry in as the columns two one 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 of p with the corresponding eigenvectors two and three on the diagonal, okay, and that's it. That's it. And that that will be that that will be diagonalizing it. Now we're going to check that it really did diagonalize it. So calculate the inverse of p. So that means you're going to go one over the determinant. So the determinant is two minus one. The determinant is one. So it's, then you want to write down the the cofactor matrix. So it's going to be two, one, and then minus one minus one. Then you want to transpose that to get the adjoint, and that's that. One of times by one over the determinant, but the determinant was 
sorry, I wrote it on the wrong, that's not the cofactor matrix. Cofactor matrix has one, two, and then minus one, minus one, because the cofactor is, the cofactor of two is one, okay, and so on. Transpose it, but it stays the same, you transpose it, times it by one over the determinant, but the determinant is just one, so it stays the same, so that's the inverse of P. Multiply these out, okay. So you do, what, one times two, you get two plus two, four, this way, one times one and two, and one and one, you get three, minus one and four, and times by two and one, you get minus two plus four, two, and minus one and four, you get minus one plus four, which is three, cool. Now times, now times this matrix by this matrix, one minus one, so you get um, four minus two, which is two, you get, and you have three minus three, which is zero, then you have minus four plus four, which is zero, and then you have minus three plus six, which is three. Yes, and that's the diagonal matrix. Okay, so we guess we diagonalize this matrix. Okay. Now, now we have another example. Okay. See so here we can diagonalize this matrix. Okay. So again, start by calculating the diagonal values. So you want three minus lambda minus one, four, seven minus lambda. Okay, so what can we do with this one? We could do let's see, if we what would happen if we if we added row one to row no, we subtracted row well, I don't want to subtract. If we added row one to row two we would get we would have 11 minus lambda, and we would have 2 minus lambda, that's not nice. You could add column 2 to column 1, you'd get 7 minus lambda, and you'd also have 6 minus lambda, that's not helpful. Eish, I, I can't see anything to do then. There's nothing you can do to, to, to simplify this, I don't think. Um... Four, I mean, the difference between 4 and 7 is 3, and between 3 and minus 1 is, unfortunately, 4. Okay, I can't see anything to do. So, just calculate it straightforwardly. So, 3 minus lambda times 7 minus lambda times by minus minus 4, plus minus minus 4, so plus 4, okay, times it out. Factorize it. Okay, the eigenvalue is 5, it's only 1. Algebraic multiplicity of two. So it may or may not be diagonalizable because we don't know whether this eigenvalue of five with a, with the multi algebraic multiplicity of two, we don't know what the geometric multiplicity is. That is, we don't know what the dimension of the eigenspace is. Okay, so we have to find the eigenvectors. Okay, so look at the eigenvector equation. So that's going to be, we're looking at. Um, 3 minus 5, which is minus 2, then the other minus 1, and then 4, and then 7 minus 5, which is 2, times the eigenvector equals 0 vector. Okay, so we could do... We could do row 2, could get minus a half times row 1. We could also divide row 1 by minus 2, because then we would get... The top row would get 1 minus 2, and here we would have 0, 0. So that means that V would be 2, 1, or could be 2, 1. Uh, but there's only one, there's only one free variable, right? So there's only one linearly independent eigenvector, so this thing cannot be diagonalized. Right, the corresponding eigenspace is one-dimensional. You can still find P and D that satisfies AP equals PD, right? It's this and this, okay? This equation is always, you can always make up something, that, you can always write down this equation, it's just you can't always invert this P to, to diagonalize it, so you can't write that, okay?